Hey everyone, welcome back to A Tribe Called Dylan Podcast. I'm Angie Dylan, And I'm Rose Dylan, And I'm Alvin Dylan. Hope you had a great week. Please start thinking about your win of the week. You probably know this by now. This is our usual routine when we start off our segments for something for us to think about, something positive that happened in our life in the week. And that's why we like to always table and start this episode with just starting off with some positivity. So, okay, Al, let's talk about your win of the week. Okie dokie. So I started a book, uh, probably almost like two or three months ago called the psychology of money. It was recommended by Rose. We share an app called ever they called ever and now, which is now the old script. It, it's a weird, weird name, yeah. but the old script and it's a, uh, we share it. So it was on the iPad and I kept going through it and I got slowed down. Finally, I was like, I'm going to finish this book because I don't like having like an unfinished book or a task. So I finished the book last week and it's actually pretty insightful. It's by Morgan Housel, I believe. Really good, really good book. It's highly rated. It's a, I think it's like an Amazon bestseller, yeah. New York Times bestseller, but it does get you to think differently about what is the psychology of money and how it influences people and how the times, what caused certain uh, recessions and certain issues that we had in the market. So it's a really good read and I'm just happy that I finished that book. Good, good job. And what did you say? You said something earlier, uh, Scribd or Scribe? What is the that? The original app that I was on, which is like a, it's like a chapters app, it's called Scribd. But now they've changed the name to Everend. Which, and what is Scribd? It's just an app that has uh, all the audio books and whatnot. So it's it's like an online catalog for books. Okay. And is it app. free? Is no, it no. It's, I think it's $15, $15 a month US. Okay. And is there a, like a big catalog of books? In, oh, yeah. yeah. Most, Huge yeah, catalog. Most books that get released eventually get added to Scribd. Yeah. Some few books here and there that you can't get or you can get an ebook version of it. But I think about 95 to 99% of the books. Yeah. Or on script. That's okay. Alan. I go to because you can get audiobooks and you can get the regular okay. books. That's yeah. what I want to know about. Okay, awesome, Alan. Great win and thank Rose. You, okay, you. I my win. It's on my phone, so I had to have it with me here. Um, I just I came across this post uh, about a week ago, and I was like, yes, like that's exactly what I wanted to say and what I'm why I'm here on this podcast. So I'm going to read the quote and then I'll. Explain. So when I grew up, women were always pitted against one another. It took me until adulthood to see that the instinct for women to lift each other up to their highest potential is the norm, not the exception. And that was by Blake Lively. And I was like, yes, girl, like that is one of the reasons why I joined this podcast to do this is I was also like her and always taught that women were supposed to compete against each other. Um, there's one boy, there's two girls and they're supposed to both fight for him. And getting into adulthood, I started learning about like, this doesn't seem right and doesn't feel normal. Um, and then older I got, it was like, yeah, this is silly. Women should be building each other up. We should be supporting one another. We should have a sisterhood community where we protect one another. We um, elevate one another, inspire one another to be better and mm -hmm. share what we learn and share how we grow. And there's plenty of fish in the sea. You don't need to go and like, fight to be with him or, or, or any of that stuff or, or try to size her down if you're at work because you're like, I don't want her to get the promotion. There's plenty of room for all of us. We all have a unique talent and a unique skill, but it's really time more than ever today that we women start sticking together and helping each other to, to grow and support one another. So I really, really, really loved that quote. Mm -hmm. Good for Blake Lively for, yeah. for talking about that. Yeah. Her and Ryan Reynolds, what a power couple, huh? Right. They really are. I yeah. think that's that's fantastic. And and I've said this, I've always championed for a woman all my life. Um, some haven't championed for me uh, through my the course of my bullying. And I can laugh at this now, I'll tell you. It wasn't so funny when I was younger, but uh, you got to laugh at your pain sometimes. And if only, if only during that time, we as uh, young kids and young sisters had band together, um, the trajectory of my bullying would have been different. But the nature is such, now we have a platform to talk about it. We have a platform to use our voices to start stimulating some interesting conversations about sisterhood, uh, empowering women to, you know, and same goes for men. Uh, men, maybe, I, I don't know, I don't hear so much of men breaking each other down, but, you know, even if there is some of that, let's just be a united society. Let's just yeah. build each other up. There's so much more positivity and growth that comes when you see someone else successful. And don't ever feel that, well, I gave them that idea Idea and look at them now. Your time will come because yeah. I always say the universe keeps tabs and scores. So 100%. if that idea originated from you, you will have your day and you'll shine as well. So 
Good for you, Rose. Awesome. Love it. Thank you. I have a great win. Um, I have two products here, but I'm only going to highlight one of them. And you're going to have to come back and tune into the next episode where I talk about the other win. So ladies, this is a beauty hack moment. It is a pro secret tip. Uh, I am in the business of sharing. If something works for me, I want to bring it to your attention. I have always been fascinated with mascara, eyelash curlers, uh, knock on wood. I have been fortunate at a young age, I had, I think, a decent length of lashes. But over the years, as you get older, your lashes do dry out. You do still have to moisturize and take care of your eyelashes. And and come with that to having great eyelashes, you also need to invest in a really good eyelash curler. So I want to let you ladies know that a lot of times those a drugstore, I mean, if you can find a good drugstore department brand eyelash curler, amazing. But my eyelash curlers have always been quite expensive. So for the longest time in my 20s and early 30s, and up till about, I'd say a few years ago, um, I was using the Shoe Amera eyelash curler. It is hands down one of the best, best eyelash curlers. It is expensive. I think it comes in at a price point of $40, Rose. Canadian, right? Yeah. Okay. And I recommend it to Rose. I've had different um, iterations and versions of the Shoe Amera, but I also have the original Shoe Amera um, and it started starting to fall apart. So I thought, what can I do? I did a whole bunch of reviews. I watched probably some of your YouTube videos on beauty hacks when you do one eyelash with this curler, you do an another eyelash. Anyhow, I pulled the trigger and I want you ladies to know the Shiseido eyelash curler. Whoa, game changer. So ladies, this is about four, I think $32 in Canada. So with tax, it works out to be $40. But the most amazing thing about this eyelash curler, what I've noticed is uh, it gets a lot of the eyelashes towards the end of your eye and in the begin and in the front. It's the, the, um, there's the room. I don't know how to say it is, I guess the, the face of it, when you, the eyelid circumference is quite long. So it takes a lot. Um, it can pull a lot of eyelashes and pump a lot of it. So that's all I'm going to say is, uh, you will notice a difference with this eyelash curler. And when you do get an eyelash curler, you know, naturally that you have to invest in a really good mascara, but stay tuned to our next episode for me to talk about which mascara I think is trending and that all of y'all ladies need need to invest in. So that's my win of the week. Awesome. That was a long win, Edge. It sure was, but it's yeah. hard to mm-hmm. explain. I think Al went to I like, focus. yeah, I saw yeah. that. I <laughs> Beauty tips tend coffee. to be like that long and lengthy. Get it? Just like our lashes. <laughs> Woo-hoo. All right, let's get Cheese started. Bomb. Cheese bomb. Okay. Let's get into... Let's get into this. So we know that the last few episodes um, through our channel um, have been heavy. It's stuff that we are, we're talking about. A lot of times these are things that we're feeling and then, you know, the ideas will come for an episode. And when they're fresh in our mind, we just want to go ahead and talk about it. So today's episode is another one of those episodes where it's fresh in our mind, top of our mind. And we just think it's a great great way as we are a couple months into the new year. And it's going to help us and help you, we hope. Set the tone for the course of the duration of the year where you've got some tools in your tool belt now that we're going to speak to you about, and it should hopefully empower you to have an amazing 2024. So today we're going to talk about five things that give away your power. And these are the five things that we feel give away your power. We've done some uh, internet research on this and uh the other other um, sites have kind of maybe rephrased it or reworded it a little differently, but it's all in essence the same thing. So, okay, five things that before give away you your go power. into that, why don't you yeah. explain to people what is your power? Like, if I'm someone who's mm. 17 yeah. and I'm watching yeah. this, like, what do you even mean by power? What does that That's even mean? That's great. That's such a great question, Rose. When I think of the word power, I think of you as a human being, your uh, experience with the world, how you show up, your being. To me, power is connected to you as a human being. Like, what is your superpower? Um, Each of us have a superpower. We all don't have the same superpower. All of us are born with different abilities and strengths. But to me, power comes with your innate ability of you being special. Mm. Make sense? Yep. Okay. So it's just you. In essence, it's how you show up. Yeah. So when you say that that it's your special power, then... When you say you're giving away your power, mm-hmm. doesn't that you just mean you've let someone take over your energy and you yes. just let them? Well, like she's saying, it's your superpower. I think you're letting someone take that from you. Don't yeah. let someone take that from you. 
Yeah. Giving your power. But when you away. say the superpower, isn't that just not special uh, specifying one part of you? Isn't your you are the superpower, your own power? That's a good, that's a good way to that's look a at good, it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think we all have I, maybe I should rephrase yeah. it and say you're a superhuman being with superpower abilities. Yeah. And when you say you're they're taking your power, it's basically your energy. It's yes. like your mood. When yeah. someone comes and they ruin your mood, you've yeah. somehow either given your power away or you let them kind of get into your head and play games and that's why your mood is gone and they've essentially say taking your power away. No, and I like yeah. when you said that. That's really good because you're yeah. really, it's true. It's energy, but I think we're not in that world right now where people understand that context so much. So it seems to be, because even with my work, I see this a lot coming up about power, taking who's got power, who doesn't have power, who's taking the power, who's that. So it seems like we're in a world right now where that conversation around power power seems to yeah power seems to be more understanding to people than it's really just energy you're absolutely right it's really Mm -hmm. just boils down to energy is al al are you a millennial yeah is he yeah he is Is i'm the oldest millennial and oh okay and you're i'm a gen x i believe and what are you millennial i'm the oldest millennial oh there's such a thing yeah okay and al's a younger millennial yeah Okay. See, this is why we have the three of us and we share perspectives and yep. we get schooled every day. We learn from one yep. another. So I like the way you said that, Al. That's great because I don't know everything. I don't know it all. I just come mm-hmm. up with these questions sometimes, but you're right. It is your energy in essence. Um, first one here that I have is over explaining. Over explaining gives away your power. And why that's you, you Ann. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's, it. that's all about you. I know. I, awesome. I, when I saw that, I'm like, I'm so guilty of yeah. this. I tell, I give away the whole house and the, all the information. Mm-hmm. I do. And I, it's not necessary. But yeah. Al, why do you think over explaining gives away your power? I don't know. I, I, I'm still trying to figure that out about you. But why you do that? <laughs> because I, I'm the type of person, I just look at it as like, why am I going to give you all this extra information for no reason, so much more extra time. I just look at it when you're sending an email, you're like, just give them the straight basics. You don't need to mm-hmm. tell them. It's like when someone's away from the office, you don't say, oh, I'm away because I'm going on a, a, a self-seeking journey of myself and I'm going to be away for three weeks in the Himalayan mountains. Like that's too much I information. I like women, like women in yeah. the workforce, we seem to want to give a lot of reasons as to why we need a day off. But you're right, because I've seen my counterparts like, yeah, I'm just taking PTO on Friday. Yeah. I'm like, and that's what it should be. I shouldn't have to oh. know more about your business than yeah, I need to. We right. already got so much information. Yeah. You do you. When people over explain themselves, I feel like they're almost trying to hide something right. to explain like, oh no, I'm, I need to be away for this reason. And it just sounds sort of something doesn't add up that you're mm-hmm. like, I don't need all this information, nor do I care about all this information. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're right. That's a good and point. I, I am not going to, well, first of all, when I found out that that gives away your power, I was like, oh, damn. Or as Al would say, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. God. Um, so I don't, I don't really have a rebuttal or an answer. I'm guilty of this. I know that I need to work on this. And I think uh, I, I tried to figure out the source of like, why do I over explain? And I think it comes from my communications background. I'm a communications and culture specialist. I'm a storyteller. I tell stories all the time at work. And I think I naturally just take that professional uh, angle and I apply it to my my personal life. So I overshare and I don't mm-hmm. think I need to overshare. So I'm fully aware of that. I am not going to comment any more on this because yes. I'm in the doghouse on this one. So over explaining, I'm going to yeah. work on that. I'm surprised you're not over explaining that question. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Over to you, Rose. Yeah, no. And I'm guilty of this because I feel like Angie taught me a lot of that over explaining behavior. So I adopted a lot of that into my life. And it's one of those things where I found doing this in my line of work. And it was this past year because I work in, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment now where it's very much um, not a lot, not a lot of work life balance. It's very much more work and be available all the time. So when I would take a day off, I would feel like almost like guilty. And I would have to explain to my boss, like, Oh, I've like a doctor's appointment. And then the last time I was thinking like, why am I explaining this to her? Like she wants to work seven days a week. That's her decision and her choice. I don't want to do that. And so when I have PTO, which is what I'm entitled to, I'm just going to take it off and I don't have to explain to her why I'm taking it off. So I really started doing that now where I'm like, just request PTO. And I put it in the thing for two days. And I don't need to give you an answer as to what I'm doing. And yeah. for the viewers, what is PTO? Oh yeah. Pay time off. So in America, we call uh, vacation days mm-hmm. PTO. Um, some people call it pretend. I used to call it pretend time off. Um, mm-hmm. It really was in my last world. It was pretend time off. Cause I was still checking emails on my day off, but I totally um, stopped mm-hmm. doing that and made my own work-life balance because it's healthy and everyone should have that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I really um, steer, started steering away from that. Cause I was like, no, I don't need to explain to you mm-hmm. why I get four weeks of vacation and I choose to use those days because a lot of people don't use their holidays. And it's very, very uh, common in America where people don't, they just 
their whole life is work. Everything is surrounded by work. Um, and so it be, they kind of normalize it and then they expect you to be a part of it. And for a minute I did do it and then I got burnt out and I was like, no, mm-hmm. I got to take care mm-hmm. of myself. There's a reason why PTO. Good for you, Rose. I think a lot of the reason that we are so heavily connected to our work is it forms our identity. Yep. Right. That's one of the reasons. But I'm very proud to say that you no longer are a workaholic Mm -hmm. because you learned something from our episode, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. And for those of you that have not watched our confessions from a sugarholic, workaholic, uh, and what was the other and shopaholic episode, go check it out because there's some growth here from Rose. Rose is transforming. Yep. I'm putting my foot down saying, no, it is four o'clock on Friday and I am not available. Out. Good for you. Love it. Okay. Yep. The next one we're going to do is five. Another one that gives away your power is comparing yourself to other people. Why do you think that mm. gives away your power? Who wants to answer? Say the question again. Um, five things that give away your power. The second thing is comparing yourself to other people. Comparing. Yeah. That's a lose, lose, right? There's nothing because, um, I, and I've done this and I've said this in a very early uh, thing when I was watching what other people had and then I wanted what they had and you start chasing these things that the reality is from the time that I was born to who I am today, no one really knows what happened in my journey. So when I meet someone, um, and who might be really successful and he might be really good looking, I don't know what happened in that person's life from the time they were born to who they are today. I don't know what their parents were like. I don't know their upbringing. Um, all of that shapes who we become. So really that totally is giving your power away in such a negative way because I, when I was in the States and I was just maybe six months ago when I'd met one of our coworkers and he's like, Oh, you're first generation. Like he was so startled. And I remember saying like, why are you so shocked? And he's like, well, no, cause you know, you're not playing the same game as we are. Like I'm, I'm third generation. Like my grandparents were here. My parents are born and raised. And I'm here. I have a better understanding of a first world country than you do. And I really appreciated him explaining that to me. And I was like, that is why we cannot compete with other people because we don't know what their journey was like. Like a couple of my colleagues were like, Oh no, my mom was a CFO. She's been grooming me since I was 15. I'm like, like, what about your mom? I'm like, Oh, interesting. That really mm-hmm. does change mm-hmm. the narrative and how you show up and how you be. I'm not saying you can't be a CFO or do all those mm-hmm. things. It just means that you have to probably put different amounts of work in than someone who didn't have had that mm-hmm. uh, maybe at their private school or had that access given at a younger age. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm with Angie. Do not compare yourself to mm-hmm. anybody. It is definitely, from my experience, a lose-lose situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I've never compared myself to other people. I've always been content at a really young age just with what I had. I know when we, when I was in high school, I remember there used to be trend tr- jeans that would come out or overalls and girls would be sharing clothes. And I never really had much growing up. So no one, no one ever offered or asked to borrow any of my clothes. <laughs> and I think maybe that was probably a good thing because I never got caught up in that. And I also never wanted to borrow any of the things that they had, whether it was something trendy. I was always just stay in your lane, be happy with what you have. And so for me, I, I, I'm a big advocate of this. I tell these guys all the time, don't compare yourself to anyone else. Mm -hmm. Only you it's you versus you daily. Just be a bigger, Mm -hmm. a a better version of yourself Uh, 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 to you comparing yourself to other people. What do you say about that one? I think when I was younger, I did that a lot because I wanted things that they had that I didn't have. and My parents couldn't afford. For example, when I was in high school, uh, all the kids around me, one of my friends, his, didn't have his license yet, but his parents had money and they bought him the brand new H2 Hummer that came out. It was a hundred thousand dollar truck, wow. but he had to wait one year to drive it because he didn't have his license yet. So it made no sense. I just thought, to him, why would you have waited next year to buy the newer model then? But it was just in their world that that's what they do. And again, in the Indian community, the boy can do whatever he wants. So he had the truck and you, you'd idolize him be like, oh, wow, that's so cool. But when I actually saw what his family life was like, they're very hardcore religious and th- that kind of mentality. And I said, yeah, that's definitely not for me. But there were so many times where you that's what you'd want because you think like and I'd ask that I want a BMW and they're like, we can't afford it. But if you want, we'll try to figure out a way to get you one. And that's a, how about for now? We just give you the van. And when I got the van and I actually got to drive it and I realized, oh, it's not really about the car that I have. Cause first we were still meeting a lot of girls at that age and having fun. And then you said, well, I got a, a, a car to get around. I can take everybody with me at that point. You just kind of didn't care anymore. Cause now you're like, I got the freedom. That's really, that's what's really about is just getting the car. So it didn't actually matter what car you had at the time. It was just getting the car to get freedom. And as I got older, I started realizing that when people yeah. go right, I like to go left. It's like my way of being different. When I see everybody, when they had that hair came out, it was called the faux hawk. Mm-hmm. Everybody was rocking that. And I saw, Oh, that's cool. And I like the haircut. 
But I said, I'm going to wait a year until this trend ends and then I'll be able to do it. And then I'll be like a new trendsetter because they'll say, oh, it's been a couple of years. We haven't seen that. That's a cool haircut. So I always want to try to be different. I didn't like following what everybody was doing, but I did like anybody follow them to a certain extent. Like there was popular TV shows. I was watching that TV show, but I probably want to be like the character on TV that nobody else wanted to be like. Mm. Good for you, Al. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next one that we're going to move on to is another one that gives away your power is called silencing your voice and your needs. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Who wants to go on that one? Silencing your I'm voice. I'm guilty of and that needs. for sure. 100%. When you're not assertive and you don't stand up for yourself. Yeah. I and mean, I'm going to give context to the audience as to where I believe this comes from for me and how I'm kind of like navigating through that with my therapist. It's been really healthy and really um, great. But um, as a child, especially as a middle child, um, you're always told to just be quiet. Children should be seen, not heard. Um, I had a father who was very strict um, and had a very difficult rules to live by. Um, if I didn't kind of be the way they wanted. And I was a, uh, an outcast of a child, had a lot of energy. And at that time, parents didn't know what to do with girls when they had that kind of energy. Cause when boys did, they would just put you in sports, but we didn't have sports for us. And they, they put me in soccer for like a year and they just didn't, um, they didn't have the time or the resources to continue, but I just had a lot of energy. So I was always getting in trouble, but I learned very quickly, um, through being shunned that you don't speak up, don't talk back, don't say anything. So I was very quiet and very reserved. And I always let people yell at me, scream at me, talk down to me. And I would just take it because that was my programming from the time I was like five to like 25. So when I got into adulthood and got into relationships and people did that, it was just normal for me. It was until, until I, I started questioning, like, why am I allowing this behavior? Why am I allowing people to talk to me? I even said this um, to my boss uh, a few months ago. I was like, listen, I know you guys want me to be assertive. I was like, but can I just tell you how I was raised? I was like, my parents taught me, you don't talk back to the white man. That is your boss. You shut up and you do exactly what he tells you to do. And you don't talk back. I go, so when you tell me to be assertive, you need to understand where my programming is coming from. I'm hoping I educated him there a little bit, but he said the same thing. He's like, yeah, no, I, I've got Jewish parents. I had the same thing. You shut up. You just listen to what the older people say and you talk, you don't talk back. He's like, my kids are the opposite. So he's like, I, I hear you. And I'm like, yeah, that's so it's something that I have to work through daily. It's not a natural thing for me to just come out and verbally say things mm -hmm. um, and take ownership. It's something that I have to really come out of my shell to do. So yeah, that's, I hope that answered your question. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. No. Uh, silencing your voice and your needs. Al, you. I don't know if I can relate to that because I was growing up as the boy and I pretty much got whatever I wanted. Not a uh, spoil, but not that spoil. And it kind of empowered me to not take shit from anybody, not even take shit from my own parents. If they, yeah. if, when I got in trouble from school and he was getting suspended, I was like, oh, I'm going to get in trouble. But then I thought of like, no, I really won't because I'll just go to my grandparents' house and they'll tell my parents what's up and they, I, nothing will happen to me. And that's exactly what happened. I got suspended from school. I obviously made up my own lies. So dad, but I didn't know that the principal was going to call on Sunday and have his own conversation with dad. So I went to my grandparents' house and I told him what happened. And they're like, okay, that's okay. Well, maybe um, uncle will take you to Seattle tomorrow. We'll go hang out because you're going to be suspended for a few days. <laughs> I was like, okay. Reward so then, system going on. So then, uh, and then dad found out and, and grandparents called and said, yeah, you're not going to hit him. Because otherwise, if you hit him, we're going to hit you. And I, as, a, as a young kid seeing that, I was like, Oh, dude, I own you. Like, like you guys can't do nothing to me. So oh. I, then when they called and dad was like, Oh yeah, don't worry. Come over. Nothing will happen. It's okay. So I walked over on Sunday. As soon as the door closed, it was like, Tch -tch -tch. he's like, you told me this. The principal said you guys stole a bunch of balls and did a bunch of other things. You lied. And yeah. And all I did was just run, run away from it and quickly get to the door and run out and right back to our grandparents. house. Mm -hmm. stayed there for a week until they cooled down. But I just realized. Yeah, it, it kind of empowered me to say, like, yeah, I'm not going to take shit from anybody. Where to go? Like, uh, really quickly, let's get you. Um, this is a really good one, Rose, and I feel like this one, you need to hear it, is five things that give away your power. Number four, offering others too many chances. Mm -hmm. You're guilty of that because you're too nice. Yeah, I'm very guilty of that. That comes from mom. That really comes from mom. Um, watching, I think growing up, my mom always gave so many people chances. I watched her 
time and time after give people chances that didn't deserve second chances. And I think I embodied that into myself, not realizing like, yeah, um, very, very guilty of that. Not proud of it. Um, it's something that's, it, it, you could look at it and say it's embarrassing. It was at moments of my life embarrassing when I look back and, you know, do the work and be like, my God, that person was like controlling me, taking advantage of me or like using me when they needed me and then getting rid of me um, when they didn't need me. And it sucks. It really does suck. And it messes with your psyche. Um, but coming to that point now as an adult in my life and doing that self-reflection, um, I, I, I don't want to say it's never going to happen again because I, and like Ange I said, I, probably a little too nice. I'm not as um, good at picking up on those cues that people are doing that because I always want to give everyone the benefit of the doubt that everyone's got something that's going on in them, some level of trauma um, that they're experiencing. But uh, if I could do it all over again, I would be where Ange and Al are, which is don't give people too many chances. Yeah. You know, they say, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame, shame on, on me. me. So yeah. uh, I learned that lesson the hard way, the expensive way, the emotionally draining way. Um, but mm -hmm. like Maya Angelou said, we created that quote on our on our Instagram page, which is believe people when they show you who they are because they know themselves better than you ever will. Mm -hmm. Good for you, Rose. And I Thank think you. with mom, mom's, um, and she still does this, she's offered people way too many chances, like the two or three mm -hmm. or four or fifth, six, yes. six chances. And you're yes. like, come on, call yeah. it a day. Um, I think Al and I, Al, we don't really have to answer too much because we don't offer too many chances to people mm -hmm. we have a little bit of dad in us mm -hmm. from my bullying i'm a little more cutthroat i'm a little bit i see you and it's gonna end now so i'm a little bit more um mm -hmm. rose is soft whereas i'm a little bit more hard and tough yeah, i'm the similar. same and for yeah. me it's like one less task off my list so like once i've like i've done whatever i can and you're not going to change like you're cut from my life and it's great. Like you, uh, if I had to reach that point, you must have been causing me a lot of stress and a lot mm -hmm. of stuff in my life that was unnecessary. So like you go do you and I'm I'm not gonna be the person that will think about it six months later. Oh, I wonder if I was too harsh on that person. No, I only got to that point by giving multiple chances. I didn't just do it. Oh, you messed up one time today. Okay, time to cut you off. No, mm -hmm. it's like you've given plenty of chances at some point. You do you, man. I'll do me. And you know, I'm gonna add to that thing too. I think a lot of people, if they're trying to, you know, investigate in their own life and the people like this. And all of this comes from your abandonment issues. If you have abandonment issues, mm, you will true. give people a lot more chances because you're afraid to be alone. You don't want to so, lose them. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to lose them. So you will give them lots and lots of chances until you get to that point where you do this work on yourself. That's the only way you will cut ties with these people and not give them mm -hmm. additional chances is when you say, I'm okay being alone. I'm yeah. perfectly fine. I'd rather be with yeah. myself than be with friendships exactly. or relationships with people who are just constantly taking advantage of me or just squeezing the life out yeah. of me. Honestly, that's some of the lines I remember all the time. One of the best lines was from Drake, know yourself, know your worth. Mm. That's a good and one. And then the rest yourself. actions be louder than blank, blank, blank. Yeah. 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 Final one here, uh, holding grudges. Apparently holding grudges gives away your power. 100%. Yep. Yeah. 100%. Because you're always thinking about like that and um i feel like it's not one of those things where i can say it's a black and white thing it's not easy you know i i have things like that i have to work through my life still with especially when it's something from your childhood i think that's hard when somebody's been in your life your whole life and then you've mm -hmm. got to a point where you've got to mm -hmm. say goodbye to them and it's goodbye because of those reasons like they've they've taken advantage of you they hurt you you will have a little bit of a grudge mm -hmm. and a little bit of that and i think what al had said this morning earlier which is if you don't go and have that conversation with that yeah. person and release it then mm -hmm. that grudge is what you hold on to but until you go and have that co honest conversation conversation and then release it. I think he's right, which is something from your psyche and your energy just releases with yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Cause it festers. Yeah. So the entire time up till that point, what are you really doing? You're talking about that person regularly. That means they've had the certain amount of weight and real estate power. in your head. They've taken mm -hmm. up that much power. Yeah. You, once you've had that conversation, you've said done how, how that person handles it. If they want to change or not, what they do after that, it's not on you anymore. You've done whatever you can. It's up to them how it's mm -hmm. going to go about it, but you can't let yourself be the one that's going to be essentially bullied all the time. Then yeah. just like that, you weren't standing up for yourself and you continued. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think for me with the, when it comes to holding grudges, holding grudges is just too time consuming mm -hmm. and it just takes over your body. You're overthinking mm -hmm. in your head and you're yeah. playing out all these scenarios that don't even actually happen. So holding a grudge is not conducive to your mental health. You have to just address it with this 
individual yep. if you're having an issue yep. and get it off your plate. You get it off your chest. Yeah. You feel so much better because if you don't, it just festers and it creates stress in you. And you'll find that all of a sudden, oh, my appetite's off. Or I'm, the, things will start happening in your body and you won't know what's going on. And it's literally that that stress thing. It's like when you have to have a talk with your boss about something or a coworker. Mm-hmm. Up, if it's even next week when you know the meeting schedule and you're like, oh, that's going to be a tough meeting. All week you're going to be thinking right. about it. Yeah. And then you're going to try to do things to not think about it. And you're going to go actively out of your way to say, okay, I got to I got to ignore that today. I got to figure out to keep myself busy, but it's there. It's lingering. Yeah. 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 Just, okay. We hope today's episode was insightful and, and, and impactful. And perhaps you're able to uh, get some nuggets of information here that can uh, help you lead a productive 2024. With that said, the tribe is going to be signing off. We look forward to connecting with you next week. Continue signing in and checking us out and logging in and viewing us live. Um, the journey together is pretty exciting. We appreciate your support. Please go and hit that subscribe button. Check us out on all of our social channels. Think about a win of the week. We're signing off. Bye for now. Bye-bye. See ya.